Hello there. Welcome to Tech and Cash. I hope you are doing well. So today we're going to continue to review some of the birds from the latest Wingspan Asia. And of course, joining me, we have Flan from Winging It, my special guest as always. How are you doing, Flan? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, good to be back looking at some more birds. Always exciting to uh, to do one of these episodes. So yeah, let's get right to it. All right, let's do it. All right. Coming up, we have a brown power. We have the Cyrus Crane. So, three food. Yeah, and a very interesting power as well. So, when activated, each player may discard one egg to draw one card from the deck. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, I know. quite a lot of the time, you, you already get that option yourself to discard an egg to get extra cards. So, it is nice to have that option, I think, particularly early game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Something, something we've talked about before, right? When you get that option, you normally want to discard eggs, get to, to look at some extra cards. So uh, I guess the only thing kind of putting me off a bit is giving other players the opportunity to do that when yeah. they're not having to go to their wetlands to do that. You know, maybe they've already got a surplus of eggs to discard and then get some cards from the deck. Um, yeah, a bit of a tricky one. I mean, you're already getting seven points for three wild foods. So it's it's kind of already a pretty good return. I guess you can kind of choose when you want to activate it but yeah with that food cost quite a tricky one to get done early game i think yeah not not feeling strongly about this again like you say it's it felt like you you're helping your opponent more for gaining card because mm. if you're activating this you're already going to the wetland you're already gaining cards. exactly but your opponent just get free option for cards so yeah all right while well, we have another wetland bird coming up we have the yellow bittern it's kind of cheap to play yeah, so single food, and then when activated, draw the card in the middle slot of the bird tray. So, yeah, I guess that's going to depend entirely on if that's I a know. good bird. Um, it's like I think it's guaranteed these, you have a card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, you're always getting you're always getting a card, um, whether it's a card you want or whether it's a card yeah. that you're going to find useful. Uh, who knows? But. Yeah. I mean, sometimes all you need is cards, right? If you're going to be tucking cards to to draw more cards or maybe to lay some eggs or get some food um, or even discarding in the forest, I think, yeah, cards are cards. So yeah. um, these kind of cheap birds early game to get down and get extra cards, I, I don't think you can say no to those. Yeah, I, I think it's a play for me as well. I mean, the power is subpar, but at least it's it one is, yeah. food, you know, like yeah. there's many other exactly. subpar power that cost two food that really mm. cost some heartburn when I have to play them. <laughs> Ooh, this one is really cute and has a cute name as well. It's the plumbiest red start. <laughs> oh, look at I look like at how, how how plumbiest that is. <laughs> it's very plumbiest, very plumbiest, <laughs> and uh, quite a quite a wordy power. This one, so All we'll right. go through it. When activated, draw one card from the deck and add it to your hand. All other players draw one card from the deck and add it to their hand if the bird has a worm or a seed in its food cost. So, huh. again, I mean, like the one we just looked at, a single food, and you're getting card draw from your wetlands. But you're getting four points this time, so yeah. I quite like that. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I need to I need to think about how likely it is yeah. that a bird is going to have worms or seeds in their food cost. That feels quite likely uh -huh. um, that you're opposed, but it's not guaranteed. So. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they draw a card and then they can't keep it. So you're only benefiting from that. But um, yeah, I mean, we've seen similar powers like this in the base game and in previous expansions where it's a single food and you're already getting quite a good point return alongside a nice strong brow power. And I think those are always the kind of birds that I look for early game at least. Yeah, I, I think it's very tempting not to play or activate this. Just like, mm. it's so cheap, you get points, and the power is good. And I, I assume, like, the wild food doesn't count. Like, it has to be, like, a grub or a grain, so... Oh, yeah, I just I would assume so as well, yeah. All right. Oh, this one, this one is definitely an interesting one-play power with the Great Indian oh, Buster. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I do remember seeing this one as well, so... Um, yeah, when played, score one of your bonus cards by cashing a seed from the supply on this bird for each point, and then also score it normally at game end. So, I mean... yeah, what's there to say? I mean, if you've got a strong bonus card, like you know, you've got ecologist or oologist, or you know, something like uh, mechanical engineer, I guess, even from from some of the other expansions, when you're looking at like eight or more points, 
and then you score that now and at game end. I mean, yeah. that just feels really, really strong. So I, I think this is even with a even with like a suboptimal bonus card. Even if you're only getting maybe four or five points, yeah. I think that would still be worth playing. But the 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 potential on this is just absolutely huge. Late, I in the know. Game really feel kind of busted for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh this one i think a lot of people are gonna like but it's it's All not right. easy so we have the rosy starling Ooh. oh yeah very very interesting looking power as well that one so when it's to tuck up to three cards from your hand behind this bird and then if you tuck at least one gain a worm from the supply so Quite similar, I think, to, to to a bird we looked at in a previous part um, of this of this series. Yeah. Um, but obviously, this time you're you're getting food. So flexible habitat, um, three different foods. I mean, you play this in your wetlands. You start drawing cards. You start tucking cards, and you get food. I mean, this this just feels like a, yeah. a really nice kind of bird to get down early game for sure in your wetlands. Yeah, I mean, three food is a big commitment, but again, you're mm. gaining the food back like yeah, eventually. Exactly. So. Exactly. I, I yeah. think that's definitely a play for sure. All right, we yeah. have another when play card coming, when play power coming up. We have the white headed duck. Ooh, yeah. Another bonus card, bird. So this time, when played, you draw three new bonus cards and yeah. keep one. So that's quite nice. Yeah. Um, I think, I think there was a similar bird in one of the expansions as well. But most of the ones that we're used to, you know, you only get to draw two or sometimes only one, and yeah. that could be quite a quite a risk, but. Yeah, I mean, when you look at three, I think you you can expect to get at least one there that yeah. you're going to get some points from, and you're already getting four points for yeah. a seed and a wild food. I mean, that feels pretty good on its own, I think. So, yeah, I, I've got no complaints with this one. I think I'd be looking to play it. Yeah, feel that play, just like such flexible food cost. Mm. Ooh, this bird looks kind of mean, but has a cute name. I don't know. Is it <laughs> is it a toy? <laughs> I'm gonna say I would, I would, I would go with Twite. Okay, with Twite, a Twite. So, yeah, is a little bit, power? little bit of a scowl, I think, on I the on the face. But <laughs> um, yeah, nice looking power though. Round end, draw two cards from the deck, add them to your hand, and then tuck any two cards from your hand behind this bird. So I think we did look at a, a very similar power in a previous part. And so I think again, like that one, you know, you're getting tucks at round end. You're drawing cards as well. Um, you know, potentially getting some better cards to keep, or if they're not good, you can just tuck them anyway and get points. So yeah. um, this feels, this feels like a really strong bird. I mean, obviously like all round end powers, if you can get it down early in the game, you're going to get more benefit. But yeah, I, I like this. I, I would be looking to play it. Yeah, I, I, I think that this bird feel it play as well. Okay, we have another pretty basic forest bird, but looks, has good potential is the Willow Tit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when activated, cash a worm, a seed, or a cherry from the bird feeder on this bird if there is one. So lots of flexibility there. I mean, you, yeah. you've got the choice of three different foods. So yeah. um, you're, you're pretty likely, I think, to, to be able to activate that. And of course, it's in the forest, so you're gaining food that turn anyway. You can probably strategically leave the right food there to, yeah. to get the cash. So yeah i mean uh, anytime like i said before these cheap forest birds single food two points and you're almost guaranteed a point every turn uh, yeah i've got no complaints I, yeah. I think this is a this is going to be a play early game yeah not very exciting but good play yeah all right oh this looks kind of interesting so we have the black drongo oh very that. interesting indeed yeah so when activated discard any number of cards from the tray and then mm -hmm. refill it if there is at least one of the discarded birds. It's a grass and bird, lay one egg on this bird. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Again, would kind of have to maybe look at the look at the probability, see how likely you are um to to get that kind of grass and bird in the tray. But that, that feels reasonably likely. Yeah. Um I guess you can maybe strategically wait and see what the tray looks like. And then if, if there is a grass bed in the tray, you can obviously activate this power. Yeah. Um, or maybe if there isn't, you could activate a different habitat or play a bird or do something else and maybe wait um, and see if you can get some free eggs. So potential, definitely potential here. Um, three points for two food is a bit on the low side, yeah. but you are getting eggs every turn. So I don't know. I, I, I'm not kind of instantly going to play this, um, but it's probably not instantly a tuck either. So it's somewhere in the middle, uh, probably a hold. 
Yeah, I, I'm not feeling strongly about this bird either. One is that, you know, once you refill it, again, that again felt like more like you're helping your opponent to see fresh mm. card, you know, um, unless yeah. you have like other birds in your grassland that allow you to pick cards up. All right. Um, All right. Yeah, but yeah, situationally might be good. All right, next. Ooh, we have a, a when play power, the Indian Peafowl. Was that one of the first bird that got teased? Like, I think it was. Yeah, yeah that might have been. That might have been the very first. Yeah, the one very to first. Get teased. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting power. I mean, all players draw two from the deck, and then you draw one additional card. So, again, like some of the other when play powers we've looked at, that let you draw cards. I mean, if you play this, even somewhere in the first round, early on. Uh, and get to draw some cards. Pretty nice. I think even late game, you know, maybe you don't want to spend a turn uh, in your wetlands and not scoring points. If you can play this, maybe grab some birds from the deck or, or even a nice bird in the tray. Um, definitely got potential there. So seven points, flexible habitat, three foods. Yeah. Um, I quite like this. Obviously, some concern maybe about giving cards to your opponents as well. But um, I think if you can make peace with that, I think this could be a good play. Yeah. Especially if that's good card in the tray, or does it have to be from exactly. the deck? So I think the the first two have to be from the deck. Yeah, but but you I get one that from the tray. It's the additional one. Yeah, if if there's a bird in the tray that you like, I think you could choose the additional one as yeah. being from the tray. So I yeah. think that could work. Yeah, not the best way to kickstart a game, but you know, again, late game there's potential as well that you can gain card Definitely. without going to the wetland. All right, we have a two power coming up. Oh, this is interesting. So we have the gray wagtail. Oh, look at this. Very, very interesting. So round end, if you used all four types of action this round, gain two food from the supply. So yeah. yeah, I mean, we saw some very similar powers like this, I suppose, in the European expansion, where you're trying to hit all four actions. Mm -hmm. um, but in those cases, you get to play extra birds. Um, and that can be quite tricky because you don't always have the food. You don't always have even enough eggs or even enough cards to be able to make the most of that. But um, this kind of power, you're always getting two food from the supply, and food is always useful. Yeah, I think if you can if you can chain this with other teal powers, where you can use that food either to cash or to play other birds, um, I think that could work. So yeah, definitely needs other birds. I think to combo with it, but um, some really strong potential I think in this one. Yeah, for sure. I, especially in early game, you're very likely to hit mm. like all four habitats. So Absolutely. you're Absolutely. almost going to guarantee to gain your investment back and the flexibility to play in any habitat is quite nice. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Next. Oh, a pretty bird coming up again. So we have a Himalayan Mono. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, very colorful, that. that one. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. I do like that. So. When activated, all players gain one seed from the supply. You also lay one egg. So yeah. pretty nice. Um, <laughs> three different foods, five points. Uh, oh. Going in the forest as well. So again, uh, potentially getting some eggs in the forest. I mean, that's always a strong uh, activation when you can do that. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you're getting some food. Your opponents are getting some food. So you kind of got to weigh up um, how kind of useful that seed is going to be for you versus someone else. But... Yeah, I mean, the flexible habitat, play it in the forest, play it in the grasslands, wherever you want, uh, you're going to get some good benefit from that. So I think early game, you get free food and free eggs. I like that. I'd be playing this. Yeah, I feel like a, feel like a play as well. I, I think my feeling about this bird is like, it seems like this power is stronger in forest than it is in grassland mm. because with limited egg space, like, do you really need those extra egg? But in forest, getting those eggs can be so strong. Yeah, I think, I suppose it depends because you can put it in the forest and you get free eggs or you can put it in the grasslands and you're getting free seeds. So, yeah. you know, either way you're getting both eggs and food. I suppose it depends. It depends what you can combine this with, right? If you can get some other good grass and birds, you could build up a nice grasslands that's going to get you maybe some more food or put this in the forest. Particularly, there are loads of other strong forest engine birds we've looked at in this series already. So, you know, combine it with some of those. You're getting points, you're getting eggs and food. I think, yeah, just a lot of flexibility here, which I think is, is the real strength. Hey, here, here's one idea. How about you combine this with the lark where you discard the seed for even more eggs? Like, is that a combo? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, finally, we found something that combos. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken long enough. 
Ooh, this one is gonna be getting a lot of attention as well. I imagine is the Eurasian coon. Oh wow! Oh yes! Oh, I do remember this one oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, when activated, tuck up to three cards from your hand behind this bird. So, yeah, I mean, we're very familiar, I think, with similar powers that we're used to from uh, the European expansion. Just getting loads of tuck cards and obviously going in the wetlands. One food and four points, and then you're maybe getting up to three points every time you activate it. So, yeah, yeah I think just uh, uh, st lots of flexibility, right? You play this, you start drawing cards. If you get good cards, you keep them, you look to play them. And if you don't, you just tuck them behind this bird and get lots of points. So, yeah, I I've got no complaints. I think I'd be playing this for sure early yeah. in the game. Definitely a strong play for the power and the mm. food cards. Yeah. All right, next we have the Wetland Predator. Let me see, can right. I read this? The Brahmini kite. <laughs> I try. Right, you tried. You tried. That's all that counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, hunting power when activated, choose any three dice, roll them up to three times. And each time, if you roll at least a fish or a rodent, cash one here. If not, stop and return all food cashed here this turn. So, yeah, I mean, it's like the other push your luck powers, right? Yeah. You kind of keep rolling. If you get caches, you can stop. If you want to keep going, keep risking it, keep going. Um, yeah, potentially up to three mm -hmm. points every turn you activate it. I mean, that's that's crazy, where, especially compared, again, to some of the other hunting powers we're used to from the, the base game and the previous expansions. You, you're getting nowhere near that. So, yeah, um, yeah I think you're really going to benefit from this. Obviously, the more you activate it, if you can get a huge amount of cash food. So uh, in a nice wetlands, definitely, um, this feels like a good play. Yeah. For me, I, I guess like because of the food cost, it's like, okay, maybe it's not something you get down early in the game. Mm. Um, but then maybe in late game or middle game, like you won't be activating your wetland as much. But like you say, like even if you can catch like two or three food, like, you know, mm. the, the, the three food and six points is it's pretty easy to justify. Right. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Ooh. Next we have the Azulted. Oh, very fluffy one. Oh yeah. Um, very nice. So when activated, get a wormer seed or a cherry from the supply. Pretty straightforward. I don't need to say it again. Anytime you get food uh from the forest from such a cheap bird, uh yeah, you absolutely are gonna play this early game. So two different foods, put it in the forest, you get it back basically within two turns, the food cost. So um yeah, not much more to say really. I think that's yeah. a pretty straightforward play. No complaint. All right. Yeah. Maybe this is a little bit more interesting. We have the large bell crow. Ooh, indeed, that is more interesting. So, when activated, cash one food from your supply on this bird. If you do, you may tuck one from your hand behind this bird. So, very nice tuck and cash power. I oh do like yeah. That. Definitely good to feature that on this channel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, anytime you're getting you know potentially two points here right you're you're caching a food and then tucking um a card obviously from your own supply so you do need the resources to activate this yeah um but it can go anywhere so maybe you put it in the forest you gain food and then cash it or you put it in the wetlands you gain cards and then tuck them so lots of flexibility two food six points yeah i, I think this is this is going to be a pretty solid play for me yeah solid play and also rem remember this bird <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just, just saying. saying you gain egg and then you cash and then you tuck like come what on what more could you want i know <laughs> all right next we have little egret oh all right so another when activated draw one card from the deck and add it to your hand all other players draw one from the deck and keep it if it can live in the wetland so I think we did look at a similar power yeah. um to this that was looking at food cost rather than habitats but a similar kind of idea um, yeah. similar kind of idea yeah and again you know when you're paying one food pretty flexible food as well um for that early wetlands play and you're guaranteed to be getting that card draw obviously from the deck so you don't really know what you're getting but cards are cards so always useful to get that yeah i think that's a, a pretty pretty safe and pretty straightforward play um yeah. early in the game yeah. I totally agree. Again, hard, hard, hard not to, you know, Absolutely. for the power. All right, next. Oh, this one is interesting. So we have the Mandarin Doug. Ooh. 
Very nice. Yeah. I do like these birds in real life. So good to see this bird included in the expansion. And uh, yeah, pretty nice power as well. So at round end, draw five cards from the deck, add one to your hand, tuck one behind this bird and give one to another player and then discard the rest. So yeah, I mean, whenever you're looking at five cards, um, that's so strong. Yeah. And basically, you're, you, you pick the best one. You can give your opponent the worst one. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then tuck one and, and get rid of the other. So you're always getting that point. So again, if you get this down, I think maybe first round, obviously, ideally, but even second round, you're going to get some some extra points from that. So um, two food, three points, maybe not a great return, but I think you know it can kickstart either the forest or the wetlands, get some extra food, access, get some extra card draw, and then obviously this bird on its own at round end, you're going to be looking at so many cards. Yeah. So uh, I, I think this... This probably would be a play, I think, for me, uh, at least a hold, but I think I'd like to get this down. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm leaning play for this as well. Again, like, two food, I think I can live with that. Like, I think mm. we have seen, like, maybe, I think maybe it was, like, another duck that cost three food that would give you a pause, but I feel like early game mm. two food is is kind of easy to justify for strong Definitely. power. Yeah. All right. Next, we have the common Iora. Ooh, very, very interesting looking bird and interesting power as well. So when activated, lay one egg on another bird in this column. So mm. yeah, again, like uh, one of the birds we looked at before, eggs in the forest, always uh, a good thing to be going for. So one food, get this down in your yeah. forest. Obviously you need another bird in that column, but I mean, if you're playing this early game, you're pretty likely to be able to easily get another bird down in that same column, in that first column, um, to be able to lay eggs onto. So, yeah, for me, this is a, it's a pretty no-brainer, pretty solid play uh, early in the game. All right, yeah, I, I agree. I feel like a pretty solid play. All right, we're going to look at one last bird. Oh, this is also kind of right. interesting to power. The Oriental Magpie Robin. Oh, wow. It's a mech a... and a robin. <laughs> there is a lot going on here. I know. So. Very nice. Round end. For every three eggs in your grasslands, gain a worm or a seed from the supply, and you may cash up to two of them on this bird. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, definitely is going to work well with uh, a strong egg laying grasslands. Yeah. I mean, this bird itself can go in the grasslands and has plenty of egg spots, so it's already helping itself in that regard. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, getting maybe two extra points. It's quite nice flexible power, I think. You know, yeah. Early in the game, maybe you want to keep that food and use mm -hmm. that to play birds. But then in maybe round three or almost certainly in round four, you can look to cash these and get extra points. So um, situational, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think if you can... Um, get a really strong grasslands going with lots of egg spaces, get lots of eggs down there uh, and get lots of free food and maybe some free caches from this, then I think it can work. Yeah, absolutely. Again, in terms of potential and value, mm. it's not explosive, but I, I think you can get pretty decent return with this bird. For sure, yeah. All right. I think that wraps up for today's episode. Same as last time, like of all the birds that we have seen today, is that one that really Ooh. jumps out to you? <laughs> I know we talked a lot about a lot of birds. We did. We went through quite a lot there. Yeah. Um, I think the one that stood out for me, I think it's going to be, um, it's the one where you put it in the forest uh, or the grasslands, everyone gets a seed and you get, a, you oh, get an egg. Oh, you like the I, Himalayan Mono. That's one. I don't feel so bad for, for forgetting that name, but yeah. I do quite like that one. I think that one, that one definitely stands out. Okay. Um, but... Uh, yeah, there were definitely some other interesting ones. I think some of the tucking birds. Massive that, tuck, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the mass tuckers in the wetlands. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll have my eye on those, I think, for sure, when uh, when I can get my hands on this. Yeah. For me, it's like, you know, the, the buster is kind of busted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, how could I forget about that one? <laughs> I know, but close. All right. Yeah, very nice power. Um, yeah, with that, again, thank you for watching and thank you, Juan, for being with me today. Stay tuned. I think we still have a couple more birds to review next time. So I'll see you all next time.